students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here on the west coast of Canada. I hope everybody is having a super week at week so far and I hope you're staying healthy and staying productive. Uh, welcome Carolina, our chat moderator. Hi Laura, welcome members. Students, this is a members chat class. Everybody is welcome to watch. To become a member of our channel, simply click the join button next to the subscribe button. This is an IELTS speaking part two class. And we will be looking at a cue card for the speaking section. Uh, yesterday we did speaking part one. Today we're doing speaking part two and speaking part three in the next class. So you get kind of a feel for the full uh, 12 minute speaking interview of the IELTS exam. And in this speaking part two, we're going to be focusing on band nine thinking, how to come up with ideas and produce that perfect band score for this cue card. Again, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Check us out there. For general IELTS, check us out at gieltshelp.com. We've got tons and tons of help for you on those websites. So on our academic IELTS website, all you have to do uh, to get our premium package is click this uh, red button right there. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access, or at least until you pass the IELTS exam. But you might wanna use it even after because there's a lot of great English uh, and communication uh, teaching materials there. And you'll have a My Student account uh, where you have lots and lots of resources to help you get those high band scores, including over a hundred hours of HD video lessons for all sections of the test. Um, and then you have the uh, general IELTS exam or general IELTS uh, training here with the green background. Just click that red button there. Uh, hi Arda, hi Sandra, hi Janiel, Cass, Mal, Tatiana, good to see everybody in this class. Um, all right, students, we'll get cracking here in just a moment. And members, you will have a chance to uh, practice speaking part two with me today. So uh, hang in there. Um, all right, uh, we still have this <clears throat> promotion going. The uh, discount code is <clears throat> Pass IELTS. Okay, you see that just above my head there. So you can use that on the website uh, to get 20% off of our course. I'll show you where you can use that a little bit later on, but simply use it during the checkout. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com. Questions about IELTS, questions about uh, maybe uh, university registration abroad, English. Um, so just send me an email. So right now, uh, speaking part two, and then um, we'll have speaking part three where everybody will be able to join the chat that will be coming up in about 90 minutes um, after this class and a short break. Okay, um, so I will show you uh, this new practice video that we have as well where you can practice um, your speaking at home or on the go on our uh, website. Okay, now let's get into this speaking part two cue card. So you're sitting in your IELTS speaking interview, you're done part one, what we did yesterday, and you're feeling nice and confident, and then the examiner says, okay, that is the end of part one, now we will continue with part two. For this part, I will show you some questions. You will have one minute to read these questions, think about your answers, take some notes if you wish. You have some note paper there in front of you, you have your pen. I will tell you when to start, when to stop. Talk about a person who made a positive change in the world. Your one minute preparation time begins now. And then they actually look at a watch uh, and they'll check for that one minute. And you have pretty much exactly 60 seconds to get ready uh, for your one to two minute response, okay? 
And that is lots of time, as long as you know what you're doing. There's some very important steps, everyone, that you have to take in that one minute. And so your one minute preparation time, super important. Um, what is step one, anybody? So what's step one? So you have your one minute preparation time. Okay, and they should definitely give you that one minute. If they don't, they're not doing their job correctly. Okay, and they're well trained, so they will. And what's your first step in that one minute preparation time? Step one. Uh, Amrinder says, read that uh, cue card twice. And Amrinder, you just had your uh, speaking exam, I know, and it's great that you're still here with us and sharing your experiences. So yeah, Amrinder is absolutely right. One of the most common mistakes or the two most common mistakes uh, that lead to really low band scores in the speaking, one, um, the candidate speaks off topic and uh, two, the candidate does not answer all the questions on the card. So uh, keep those mistakes in mind because you have to avoid them. So two big mistakes made by many candidates. Uh, one, a candidate speaks off topic, and two, a candidate does not answer all of the questions on the card. So to avoid this, read the cue card twice. So let's do this together, everyone. Um, talk about a person who made a positive change in the world. Okay, and even though the examiner reads this for you once, just this sentence, you should still read it twice. So talk about a person who made a positive change in the world, who the person is or was, when and where did the person live, what kind of benefit did the person create for society, how can society learn from this person's actions uh, for the future. Okay, uh, so again, who the person is or was, when and where did the person live, what kind of benefit did the person create for society, and how can society learn from this person's actions for the future? Okay, good. So step one, again, read the card twice, quickly, okay? Um, you should be able to do that in 10 seconds, no more. Okay, uh, step two, and this should be very quick, this should only take you a few seconds, is identify the uh, category and tense of the card. And in this case, the category is a person. Um, we're obviously talking about a person here, everyone. So we're talking about a person who made a positive change in the world, okay? So talk about a person, that's the primary category, is the person. Okay, uh, the secondary category is the event, so the kind of change that they made. Okay, um, and the tense here is uh, past, present, and future, right? Now, I'm sure some of you have heard about this past, past, present, future, but it's not always true. In this case, it is. Why? Because it says who the person is or was, usually it's a person that already made the change, so was. Uh, when and where the person uh, lives or lived, okay? What kind of benefit did the person create? So that would be more present tense, like what we have now because of this person. And um, how can society learn from this person's actions for the future? So for years to come, okay? So that's what we have. Um, so we have past, present, future. Arda agrees. Arda says, yeah, present simple, past simple, future, good. Okay, um, so now that we've identified that, we have to remember that when we talk about a person, there are some key factors that we have to include. So when you talk about a person, then uh, what kind of ideas should you include? So in order to clearly talk about a person to 
your listener, what should you include? Arda, absolutely this person can be the president of a country if that's uh, who comes to mind. Uh, notice everyone, be careful about details. It says talk about a person who made a positive change in the world. It doesn't say it's somebody that you know. So, and I mean, yeah, maybe some of us know personally some great people in the world, but a lot of us don't. I don't myself personally know too many people that have made an, an incredibly impactful change in the world, but I've certainly learned about people uh, in school that have. Okay, so Jaimil says that, well, when you're talking about a person, you have to talk about their appearance. Yeah, it's just so your audience can visualize. Okay, um, and it's quick, all right, it's quick. And then you have to talk about their personality. Um, backed up by action. Okay. So what were they like and how did that um, impact their actions? Okay. So we'll get to that in a second. All right. Keep that in mind. So step two is very quick, everyone. Um, I mean, if I must, I would say step two should only take you three seconds. Okay, should be very, very fast. Uh, step three is a super important one. Okay. So step three is think of two to three possible choices. Um, they should be easy to talk about. Lots of content. Okay, so you can talk about it fluently, easily, for one to two minutes, all right? And it should be kind of original. So somebody that, you know, not everybody is talking about. So if you're living in India, for example, I probably wouldn't choose Mahatma Gandhi uh, for this because maybe you'll have a lot of your um, peers also choosing Mahatma Gandhi and it's going to be difficult for the examiner not to compare you to other uh, speakers and you don't want that. They shouldn't be comparing you but it's difficult not to compare when people are talking and choosing the same person or the same response, okay? So let's try to think of some, some people here, okay? Sir Khan says no one came to mind. Oh, that's really sad, Sir Khan. You got you have to be able to think of some people that made a positive change in the world. So, uh, who are some people that have made a positive change in the world? There's certainly quite a few. I mean, think about. Um... Okay, Baljeet says Steve Jobs, Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah, Steve Jobs, sure. Okay. Not sure the spelling of his name either. Well, gee. Is it the J? I don't think so. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, by the way, spelling doesn't matter here. They're not going to be looking. Um, Cass says maybe Pope Francis. Sure. So it could be a religious person that's having a big, big impact. Elon Musk. Yeah. Okay. Thomas Edison says Arda. Okay, Simran Preet says, how about Warren Buffett? Uh, Tatiana says, Winston Churchill. Yeah, helped end World War II, that's for sure. Think about scientists. Okay, um, so those are good ones. All right. Um, I'm going to give you one and this is going to be the choice for today and if you don't know who this is I want you to Google this person. We're going to go with this person today.
Anybody know who Madame Mary Curie is? Oh, there we go. Simran Preet literally, I think, wrote that just as I wrote that. Okay. So Sir Khan says Ronaldo. Uh, Romaine says Nelson Mandela. Um, let's go with Madame Mary Curie. Okay. Cass says, yes, I know. Very good. So let's go with a woman um, in our not so distant history who made a massive change. There are also um, some very famous people in older history that um, made some positive change in history, right? Um, so Cass from Asa says, inventor of radioactivity. I don't know if she invented radioactivity, but she discovered it, Cass, so be careful. Um, invent is something like a light bulb that doesn't really exist prior to our knowledge. Um, discover means that it existed, we just didn't know about it, right? So more accurately, Cass, we would say that Madame Mary Curie discovered radio activity. And Arda says uh, she's a Polish chemist. Yeah, and um, primarily Arda, I believe she's a physicist. So a physicist. Uh, Sir Khan says, yes, I know as well. Okay, very good. I'm happy to hear that uh, several of our members know about Madame Mary Curie. And if you don't know about Mary Curie out there, you should learn about her because um, she's very important in our history for multiple um, reasons. Okay. All right. I can see that there's lots of chatter coming up about her now. Um, okay. So let's choose her. Okay. So let's go through these steps. So step four, once we've decided um, who we're going to talk about is to take some notes. Okay. Anybody have a picture in their mind of uh, what Madame Mary Curie kind of looked like? So the first is the appearance, remember? Okay, you don't have to write down appearance. Um, Madame Mary Curie, what did she look like? I wonder if anybody knows. If you don't know, you can just kind of make it up. You can maybe guess. Um, but um, if you have a picture of her in mind, many, many of you I'm sure have learned about her in school, especially studying chemistry and physics. She's a key person. Um, so Cass says fair skinned. Yep. Short hair, which makes sense, right? She was a scientist. Yep. Yeah, she had uh, she had wavy hair. That's right. So she's fair skinned, um, petite. So she was she was. Uh, quite small, okay? All right. Uh, Janiel says, read her biography in an IELTS reading passage. We don't have her in our IELTS reading passages, but maybe in one of the Cambridge ones, uh, she's in there. Okay, so, um, and she was a French uh, or Polish French scientist. Right? Okay, and uh, I believe she also worked in the UK as well, but uh, I don't quite remember it. Now again, IELTS is not about the truth, so if you don't remember everything about this person, it's totally fine, okay? Um, so do keep the card in mind, all right? So again, the part two cue card is when and where did the person live? What kind of benefit did the person create for society? So before we get there, um, when and where did the person live? Okay, so I think maybe uh, Poland, France, Ukraine. I can't remember where she lived, but um, UK, sorry. Uh, if you want to be general, she was kind of all over Europe. She was a famous scientist, right? So she lived in Europe, which is fine. Um, Tatiana says she lived from 1867 to 1934. So yeah. 1867 uh, to 1934. So uh, you can think about it as um, she lived uh, in the uh, late 18th, early 19th century, or sorry, late correction, uh, 19th, early 20th century. Okay, be accurate with dates like that for sure okay 
Okay, so let's talk about her personality and that will also, I think, help us describe um, what she did and her achievements. So, um, first of all, her personality. What was she like? Okay. There's a lot of information coming up in the chat now, so many of you can see that. Okay. So, what was she like? Give me one of her personality traits. Okay. Okay, so Tatiana says she was the first woman to win a Nobel Prize. Before we say what she did, Tatiana, think about how she was. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, Arda says determined. Okay, now with determined, we could say uh, first woman to win a Nobel Prize. In fact, she won two. Okay, so give me another one of her uh, personalities. Uh, studious and curious, very good cast. So studious and curious. Uh, discovered radioactivity. Um, she discovered radium, one of the elements, right? And uh, what was it? Polonium is the other one. Okay, so studious, um, yeah, absolutely. Okay, and uh, hardworking. Okay, Baljeet says logical mind analytical, yeah. Um, both a physicist and chemist, yeah. Okay, very good. Um, anything else? So what else? She was unique. She was a revolutionary. Okay. Um, <clears throat> proved that women are very competitive in science, okay? So she comes from a time when it was very rare uh, for women to be uh, formally educated, especially at her level, and even rarer yet to be as recognized and uh, acknowledged in the scientific uh, community, okay? So, all right. So now don't forget about the card, right? Um, and you need to think about the card, the positive change. Okay, and of course in the real IELTS exam, you're doing this exact in short form, a lot of these notes, okay? So what kind of positive change um, did she create in the world? Okay, so what was the positive change that she created in the world? So we're talking about Madame Mary Curie, and of course she's a very amazing individual in history, um, but let's not, forget the goal of this cue card here, which is the positive uh, change. So what would what would be the positive uh, change? And uh, Tatiana says she was also a mother, right? Yeah. So if we say mother of two daughters, we could also say very hardworking. So obviously a scientist and two daughters, okay? Yeah, so Arda says she brought x-rays to the frontiers of World War I. Um, Arda, yeah, so World War I um, x-ray. But even more importantly, um, her discoveries led to the creation of the x-ray and x-ray is used in medicine. medical imaging, right, to help people heal, um, to be able to see broken bones, right? Yeah, absolutely, for diagnosis. Yeah, so that was, you know, she made a huge impact in the world of medicine, um, and she's very acknowledged for that. What else? Okay, think of what's outside the box. 
Okay, Simran Preet says, level of women upgraded after that. Yeah, so her, um, her discoveries not only impacted the scientific community in the sense of, um, of medical imagery, but also women's equality. She is very important for recognizing women uh, scientists um, around the world and for promoting uh, women's education. Okay, so um, how does that, so don't forget the card, right? So how will that impact the future? Okay. So what can society learn from this person for the future? Okay. And remember, you have 60 seconds to two minutes. So if you know a lot about a person, make sure not to get lost and um, talk so much that you forget to answer the questions on the cue card. Your goal in the aisles is to get that band nine, right? So you have to maximize uh, your use of time to answer all of those questions. So what do you think? What can we learn from uh, Madame Mary Curie uh, going into the future? So Arda says maybe to um, have more female chemists. Yeah. Uh, I would probably, so, okay. Um, so stop discrimination. So don't judge people based on certain attributes that have nothing to do with reality, right? Okay. Yeah, Tatiana says acceptance, greater acceptance, yeah. Okay. So stop discrimination, also scientific method. Okay, so she uh, proved that the scientific method does work, right? So um, that's something for people in the future. So we need to pursue the scientific method, okay? Okay, I'm gonna say to be ambitious and dream big. All right, um, so we have all of this. Now we can get going with our next step, okay? So step five is um, have the first sentence ready, okay? So before your one minute is up, Hopefully you'll have your first sentence ready. So you can spend about, um, let's see. So coming up with two to three good ideas, that might take you up to 15 seconds, okay? So step three. And then step four, coming up with these good notes, that should be actually pretty quick if you've come up with a good uh, person. So that would be maybe about I don't know, 25 seconds, okay? And then these last five seconds should be your uh, first sentence. Okay, if you practice this, this is doable, you can do this, okay? All right. So um, the first sentence should directly answer the question, okay? So Okay, this would be my first sentence and you can repeat after me. A person who has had a major beneficial impact on the world, especially for humanity, is Madame Mary Curie. Okay. Um, Arda says, uh, the person who inspired a lot of people all around the world is Mary Curie. Okay, very good. Um, and Arda, that's a good start because Certainly a person who is inspirational is a person that's having a positive change. I agree. So that's a really good way to start. 
okay? And then um, you just kind of get into it. So you start to um, use those notes. And anytime you get stuck, you can look at those notes. Start with the appearance so that you can introduce what they look like. They, you create that image for your listener, okay? So, Okay. There we go. So uh, again, repeat after me. She is a very famous Polish French physicist who was born in Europe in the late 19th century and lived until the 1930s. She was a petite woman with fair skin and short wavy hair. Now, notice that it's present tense. She is a very famous because she still is. Even though she's not alive, she's still a very famous Polish French physicist. So that's present tense. Okay. Kyber says a person who brought positive influence for humanity to the world was uh, Mary Curie, who lived from 1867 to 1934. Uh, very good. Okay, so Kyber, that's a good start. Jainil says a person who comes with a a person who created a major change uh, for humanity is Madame Marie Curie. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so now I'm just going to continue with personality backed up by action. Okay. Okay, so here we go. This is my next sentence. Again, just repeat after me. She was an extremely hardworking female scientist whose efforts led to the discovery of radioactivity and two elements, radium and polonium. Not only was she a woman scientist in a world of academia dominated by men, but simultaneously she was the mother of two children. Okay, so again, uh, just going forward with those notes. And if you get stuck, you look at those notes, right? So uh, logical, analytical, physics, chemistry, um, and uh, competitive, uh, two daughters. So I'm using this information now. All right, so repeat after me. Not only was she a woman scientist in a world of academia dominated by men, but simultaneously she was the mother of two children. For her efforts and genius, she was eventually awarded two Nobel Prizes, one for physics and another for 
uh, chemistry. All right. Her studious and curious nature paid off in a big way because her discoveries led to the medical imaging we use today known as x-ray and radiology. All right, so now I'm bringing it into the present tense, okay? Your goal is to finish all of your ideas, answering all of the questions on the cue card within that first 60 seconds to 90 seconds. And then if you have time and the examiner is still kind of just looking at you like, okay, do you want to say anything else? Do you want to say anything else? Because that's just amazing. I love hearing what you're saying. Uh, then you can uh, expand more and you can look at your notes and look at the cue card and say, see what else you can say. But make sure to kind of go step by step, appearance, uh, personality backed up by action and move from the past to the present to the future finishing all of the questions on the cue card in that 60 to 90 seconds okay Romaine is asking can we say she was one of the rare women scientists in a male dominated um, uh, scientific community okay so Romaine uh, almost a couple of corrections there all right Kyber says she was an analytical and hardworking uh, woman whose efforts led to discovering radioactivity in two elements, radium and polonium, uh, which turned out very beneficial for individuals around the world. Arda says her husband died because of radiation. She even kept working on radium for developments in science. Um, even though, Arda, I would use even though her husband died because of radiation. Yeah, her husband was quite a good scientist as well. Arda, um, but definitely stay on track. Don't go off track talking about her husband. Make sure you stay on track talking about her. Okay, so All right, 
So I want to make sure that I can finish uh, what I want to say in that one to two minutes. You never know what your examiner is going to be like. Some examiners are rushing a bit and they only give candidates um, a little over a minute to finish their part to respond. Some examiners are more patient. If you're not repeating yourself, if you're being fluent, they will likely give you more time. They tend to stop students um, quicker if they're repeating themselves, if they're going off topic, uh, so if they're not answering the questions on the cue card. So you have to really pay attention to that, okay? All right, everyone. Uh, so here we go from the top, okay? I want everybody to repeat after me. Again, let's take a look at this cue card. So talk about a person who made a positive change in the world, who the person is or was, when and where did the person live, what kind of benefit did the person create for society, how can society learn from this person's actions for the future. Okay, so here we go. A person who has had a major beneficial impact on the world, especially for humanity, is Madame Marie Curie. She is a very famous Polish-French uh, physicist who was born in Europe in the late 19th century and lived until the 1930s. She was a petite woman with fair skin and short wavy hair. She was an extremely hardworking female scientist whose efforts led to the discovery of radioactivity and two elements, radium and polonium. Not only was she a woman scientist in a world of academia dominated by men, but simultaneously she was the mother of two children. For her efforts and genius, she was eventually awarded two Nobel Prizes, one for physics and another for chemistry. Her studious and curious nature paid off in a big way because her discoveries led to the medical imaging we use today, known as x-ray and radiology. Indeed, identifying broken bones and helping people with diagnosis and prognosis. Her discoveries are fundamental to aiding millions of people heal around the world each year. She was certainly a revolutionary individual and proved to the world that women are just as capable as men in academia. For future societies, this teaches that people should never be discriminated by gender, race, or religion. Also, she encourages future students to dream big and pursue their passions in order to discover and help the world around them. And I guarantee if you're able to say that, you're going to be en route to a band nine, okay? Now, uh, let's, um, let's practice a little bit of this. So, members, uh, I'm going to give you a chance to either talk about Madame Mary Curie for this cue card for one to two minutes in your own way, in your own style, or if you want to be really courageous uh, and you feel confident, you can talk about another person who has had a major change in the world, and I'll give you feedback. So members, I think you know how to do this now. You've been in the class long enough. So we're going to hop over to our website. And if you're a new member and you're not sure, you can always send me an email and I'll give you the instructions on how to do this. So I wanna give you a chance and I am hoping that we'll have a few members who are brave enough to uh, use this uh, student partner speaking that's right above my head here and ping me and try uh, to give a one to two minute response to this cue card question, okay? All right. So here we go, okay? So student partner speaking, accept the terms that you're going to be polite and nice. And then members, I'm going to be specifically looking for you in here. So I'm looking for Kyber, Arda, uh, Tatiana, I see that you're in here already. If you'd like to give this a try, um, I highly recommend it. Part two is where you, a lot of students really get um, nervous and that's really where many people need practice. So if you want to give it a try, please give it a try. Okay, so I can see Tatiana is already pinging me. Okay, Tatiana. Okay, I'm brave and that sounds good. All right. Uh, the sure way to failure, everyone, is not trying. Okay, sounds good. All right, so if you're trying, you're on the right path. And I'm sure your classmates will support you.
Hello, Adrian. Hi, Tatiana. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for asking. Um, so, Tatiana, your English is great. Uh, be confident. I can hear that you're a little bit nervous, and that's totally fine. T uh, part yeah. two is definitely a bit intimidating, but um, uh, there's kind of a saying in English, you just tear off the Band-Aid. You know, like when you have an injury and then you put a Band-Aid on, and sometimes people take it off slowly and it's really painful, so they just say, tear off the Band-Aid, just pull it off quickly, right? So, uh, it basically means you just go, right? Um, all right, so I'm going to switch back. You know what the cue yeah. card is about. So it's about a, a person who has made a positive change in the world. If you'd like, you can talk about Madame Curie, um, who we just talked about, or if you want, you can pick somebody new, completely up to you. And you can start whenever you're ready. Well, I think I'll pick another person. Sure. But uh, yeah, could you could you show the card, please? Sure. Maybe I'll just plunge into it. Sure. Whenever you're ready. Okay. Uh, a person I'd like to talk about is uh, the former American president, Barack Obama, uh, who has uh, made uh, a positive change in the world by uh, legally introducing marriages for uh, gay people. The, uh, the, uh, he is uh, an African-American uh, individual, uh, he was born um, he was born in the 20th century, in the middle of, uh, uh, in the end of the 20th century, I guess, uh, and uh, he is still a, a working politician. Uh, he is tall, uh, was thin, uh, with short brown hair and brown eyes. Uh, he is uh, a family person and a father of uh, a daughter. Uh, he is uh, determined but gentle and uh, he loves cycling. Um, I believe that uh, the benefit uh, he brought to our society is acceptance of uh, every people and embracing diversity uh, despite uh, sexual orientation, preferences, genders uh, and uh, uh, such. Uh, I think that society benefit, uh, benefited, benefited it did from uh, his introduction of uh, gay marriages as uh, it simplified uh, lots of legal procedures uh, it made possible for such couples to uh, adopt uh, children and uh, thousands of them found home uh, also it uh, eliminated stigma that used to be on gay people uh, society can learn from uh, his actions. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. And now we will continue with part three. So yeah, so eventually if you keep talking for sure, uh, Tatiana, the examiner, will interrupt you. And that's not necessarily uh -huh. because you did a bad job, it's just because you kind of, you know. Uh, it's, it is a good idea, Tatiana, to find an end point. So if you feel like you've covered all of the questions, um, and you have uh, given a clear response, then kind of just stop for like a three second count, like a one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000. And in most cases, um, the examiner will recognize that, okay, the person's finished, they've answered all parts. It is a bit better than if the examiner just interrupts you and says, okay, now let's go to part three. So. So try to find that endpoint. If they don't, uh -huh. if if, uh -huh. if if after three seconds they're still kind of looking at you like, 
what's going on. There's a good chance the reason. <laughs> there's a good chance the. I know you have to read their response, right? The the, the reason they might be staring at you and not stopping yeah. you is two. Maybe you've only been speaking for forty five or fifty seconds, so you haven't actually reached that one minute. They do want you to speak for at least one minute. So sometimes it's hard to okay. feel the time. So if they're like that's only been fifty seconds, then they'll keep looking at you like anything else. Okay, I should Ooh. be looking at the examiner. Yeah. So check for the examiner's responses or the yeah, I other. didn't look at you during my answer. <laughs> okay so the other reason that they might kind of stare at you like um, you know what's going on even though you've stopped for three seconds is because you still have some time uh, in the two minutes and maybe you haven't actually answered one of the questions and they're looking at you like okay are you gonna answer that last question on the card or not but if you have gone past the 60 seconds and if you have answered all the questions on the card clearly then they will say okay now I will ask you a question related to your response and some questions on this topic. Let's continue with part three and then they'll continue. That's what they're trained to do. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. Um, so uh, I think that that response would be a band 7.5 uh, would be my low estimate. Band eight would be my high estimate and band seven would be my i'm having a bad day and my coffee tasted terrible this morning estimate okay so uh that's kind of the range but i would go with a 7.5 to be objective yeah, and fair yeah, it okay. isn't more i do agree it was it was uh, raw well it was i mean you used a lot of good vocabulary um so for example a collocation like sexual orientation uh, was very good okay uh you did go through the right steps of quickly describing kind of who he is what he looked like there were some parts that were a little bit awkward you weren't uncertain about um one um uh, important feedback for you tatiana is be confident with your first idea it's usually correct uh, careful with making awkward corrections like you said he's an african-american individual he was born in the middle of the 20th century and then you corrected and you said late 20th century which is not correct he was definitely born in the middle of uh, the 20th century i think around the 1950s uh, so he he'd be far too young uh, in the late uh, 20th century so so careful not to correct unnecessarily that's awkward and you did that a few times so just stick with it and go with it okay uh -huh. um and uh, you said he is determined but gentle and he loves cycling okay that was fine um but i felt like those aren't really related so how is determined and gentle and loving cycling connected it's an awkward connection so he is determined obviously he became the president of uh, the world superpower, the United States, as a person with African American descent. He is the first American president um, to come from a minority. And he had to work extremely hard to achieve that status in society, right? So when you say yeah. something like determined, that's where you can really connect I that give an concept. I should give explanation. Absolutely, because if you don't explain personality, then you're uh -huh. leaving it up to the listener to guess what is meant by that personality. Yeah, and if they're not familiar with that, yeah. And if they don't know that individual, then that just doesn't work, right? So, uh -huh. um, okay. So those were kind of the main points. Um, and uh, I really liked how later on you got quite clever at what you were saying um, as far as, you know, you said that... Um, uh, society benefited from um, making um, gay marriages legal whereby they could adopt so um, you said it made it possible for such couples to adopt children and thousands of them found uh, homes oh. um, thousands of them careful with pronouns that are unclear like who found homes the gay couples or the children <sighs> obviously you're talking about the children but thousands of orphans orphans that's right yeah so orphans gives you the lexical resource mm -hmm. mark okay and coherence. Um, and coherence exactly so you're always searching for those specific subjective nouns like orphans right mm -hmm. and thousands of orphans found homes ah okay that's really a positive change in the world okay all right so uh focus on those points and then you can push that seven five up to that 8.5 and that nine category tatiana thank you so much for being brave and for volunteering that was super 
Thank you for your assessment. You're very welcome. Keep up the good work. Okay. Uh, I will. <laughs> oh, awesome. Um, give Tatiana an applause, uh, members. That was really brave, and um, she did a fantastic job. Okay. All right. So uh, let's see. Anybody else in there? Uh, Baljeet, I see that you're volunteering. Cassandra, I see that you're volunteering. But I'm running short on time, everyone. So I'm going to um, stop with just the one example for part two, Barack Obama by uh, uh, Tatiana. And then we'll pick up part three. Okay, so Baljeet, Cassandra, um, uh, definitely volunteer for part three in the next class coming up right now. And then I will find you and we'll do a bit of practice, okay? So um, that's it for part two. And there was an example uh, by all of us, which was Madame Mary Curie. And then an example by Tatiana for uh, Barack Obama, who was a very impactful American, uh, former American president. Now we'll continue with part three in the next class. But first, we're going to have a 30 minute break, everybody, before speaking part three. So stretch your legs, grab a glass of water, um, clear your head, uh, and then uh, get ready to focus on some more English. I will be back. Uh, again, check out our websites. That's what we're using for our speaking interface, uh, aehelp.com and gilshelp.com. Uh, grab our premium package. Um, it's uh, a great price and it's worth the investment. Uh, you can use this discount code, uh, pass IELTS when you do that. Uh, one-time payment, lifetime access. I hope to see all of you very soon uh, in half an hour. So bye for now and catch you uh, in a bit.